Hi friends, hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Melin. So NICT November 2022 session exam is finally over and students have mixed uh, opinion about you and mixed reaction about the exam. So I had conducted a small uh, poll on YouTube uh, about uh, the exam difficulty and the uh, number of questions. So let's try to see what is students opinion about that. So when we talk about the difficulty of exam, most of the students found it moderately difficult like more than 50% students. If we talk about the number of questions students have attempted, so more than 50% students have attempted more than 185 questions and I think it's a good attempt because as I have always said in my previous videos, it's a competitive exam. There will be around 150 questions which everybody will be knowing. So next 30 to 35 questions where you have to take a chance. So more than 185 is a very good attempt and it, it really gives a very good chance to stand in the top uh, ranks. About the weightage of subjects, uh, it's no secret in aims that uh, basic sciences always have the highest weightage and it was also true and uh, it was also like uh, this time as well that more than 50% of the questions came from the basic sciences and this is what actually being followed for more than last 5 to 8 years and it will be followed in the next sessions as well. So the students who are preparing for the next session of NACT should be, you know, you should take make a note of this fact that basic sciences will always form the basis of your NACT and you have to be master of your basic sciences if you want a good rank in NACT. Now we talk about a lot of students are asking me sir what should be you know uh, what rank should I expect based on scores. Again as I have said that AIMS never releases its score it's always a percentile <coughs> and you know as I said that you know toppers they can tell anything. Toppers always have a modified story I mean it's, it's very difficult to uh, you know bring out what exactly happened because what they release is percentile but what can I tell you that genuinely over my last 5 8 years of experiences and after talking to a lot of toppers and their interviews and everything I'll tell you one rough estimate that the top 20 to 50 ranks usually they get uh, right between 150 to 160 because the difficulty level of uh, aims or INICT exam is such that it's very difficult to cross 160 correct so somewhere the students who are placed between I'll say 150 to 160 if you get uh, these many girls will definitely end up in top 20 to top 50 rank. Now if you are somewhere between 140 to now what happens after this rank the clustering starts happening because a lot of students they get a similar number of uh, marks but the number of correct questions by student will be different and the range will be different so that these are the tiebreakers that are used. So if your correct responses are between 140 to 150 uh, you will end up somewhere between 50 to 200. And as I said that there will be a lot of clustering. Now if you are between 130 to 140, again then the, here the clustering will be even more. So you will end up somewhere between 300 to uh, 1000. So that is roughly. If you are less than one, 130 correct, then uh, I will say that you will be expecting a rank above uh, 1000. Now that is about the number of correct responses. Now if we talk about the silly mistakes, a lot of friends say sir I have done a lot of silly mistakes so and I am not remembering the correct responses. So I'll just tell you with my experience and whenever I had discussed with my juniors, with my colleagues and whatever, you know, uh, my interaction with the students over the last uh, two, three years. So whenever you, it's the number of silly mistakes, you know, you have to bring down the number of silly mistakes and you can eventually, uh, you know, predict your rank. So the number of silly mistakes are like five to seven if you have done in this exam. And what are silly mistakes? Well, you should define silly mistakes. It's something that you do not know, something that, you know, uh, failure to recall that you read once in a while or maybe in your MBBS days you heard it or maybe someone else know it and you don't know. It's not a silly mistake. Silly mistake is what actually came from your material from your source and then you did it wrong in the exam because maybe you or think about it or maybe you were not able to recall it because of your uh, lack of your revision but it was there in your uh, source. So this is what silly mistake is. So as you do better revisions, your silly mistakes, the number of silly mistakes will come down. So if you have done five to seven silly mistakes in this exam, I'll say you still stand a good chance because nobody is perfect. Even the top rankers, they do a silly mistake. So five to seven is okay. You can expect a good rank. Now what happens when you do like 15 to 20 silly mistakes? Like if you say that, you know, the, everything was there in my notes, but I was not able to recall because I was, you know, reading so many things simultaneously. I was doing a lot of things. So I got confused at the, in the exam. But a student says, sir, I change answer at the end. So this is what happens when you're confused. And this is where uh, it takes a toll on you. So I have seen, uh, you know, when I also did like around 15 to 20 silly mistakes, my rank was between like 1000 to 3000. So it was a good rank to say, you know, I got like 1100 or 1200 rank in NICT or even like 900 rank in NICT or AIMS. But basically I was not getting any seat or the seat that I wanted. So the good rank is always about like, you know, in between 200, 300, where you stand a chance of getting the seat of your choice. 
So this is how you can predict a rank depending on your uh, syllabus. Like, and again, as I, as I have said that it's about the percentile. It does not matter that how many you have got correct out of the total. It depends on how you have fared or how you have performed as compared to the uh, as compared to your competitors. So that is going to define your rank. Now NICT has happened. So what next? So I'll say just take a rest. You know, one week, just go for a trip. You have been, you know, doing everything. You have been studying. You have been doing everything for uh, for last few months, and uh, it's definitely you have must have been uh, you know burning out. And you need that break. So take a break, go out, plan a trip, and spend time with your family. If even if you are planning for the next NICT or NEET page exam, don't start uh, like as of now. Trust me, your brain needs a break. I have seen the example of the students. Even I, uh, I can share with you my experience as well. The students who have taken a break when needed have performed much better than the students who have, you know, uh, who have just uh, burned themselves out. So don't do that. Take a break. One week is not going to harm you. After one week, start afresh. You will have your next target, and we will work on that together. So, guys, I wish you all the best and take care.